Today I'm gonna show you about piano chords, how to add rhythm and texture. So I made this very simple chord progression. And today I'm gonna show you some ways in which that you can add some more personality. Simply make it so that you think it's more exciting. So the methods I'm gonna show you today is based around how a piano player is playing chords. He's basically playing with his left hand and his right hand. And right now we have only three notes, which is how I would play with one hand, my right hand. So let's try to make some voicings that is more appropriate for two-handed playing. Now we have like just regular minor major chords, one, three, five. And what I'm gonna do is simply to copy the one and the fifth an octave down. So I mark them all, press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, Shift arrow down. So now I have like the left and the right hand. So the left hand is playing one, five, the root and the fifth. And the right hand is playing one and the third and the fifth. And then another really important thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the sustain pedal. So I go to envelopes and I go to control 64 and then I'm simply gonna paint that sustain on all the chords and then I will say no to each of the beginnings of the new chords. So it doesn't become that messy. And in this way, when we are continuing, it will just sound like a million, at least in my experience and in my years. The basic approach is simply to make the rhythms with the left and the right. So this is our start point, and then I will write a rhythm. And I use L, R, and B. L for left, R for right, and B for both. And the first rhythm that we're gonna make is both R, R, R. So both is how they start now. But we need the R, 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 R afterwards. So it's gonna look like this. So one, two, three. For moving notes around, I use the arrows left and right. And for shortening and extending, I press shift and arrow left or right. So B, R, R, R. So this is very like traditional. We have heard this before and that's good. And I think the most important thing is here to notice how easy it was to simply go from like this. So by just giving it a bit of rhythm, we really gave it some character. But let's try to uh, make some more. And uh, I will just uh, quite randomly L, R, R, L, L, R, L, L, R. Since I really don't know how the rhythm is going to be, then I will start to make the rhythm with the first chord and then I will simply add it to the next chords. L, which is left, that means that the R shouldn't play. L, R, R, so let's figure out. I like that. So L, R, R. So one more R. And again, for copying my notes, I press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, copy pasting, and shift arrow left and right for shortening or extending, and then simply left and right for moving around. Yeah, I like that. And then two left. Maybe just uh, do like this. And then left, left, right. And they of course has to come after each other. That was too fast. Uh, that was an R, so two left. And it's so, that actually surprised me. So, and then all we need is a 
right hand. So maybe if we put it here. Okay, so let's duplicate this rhythm for all the chords. So I will start with just making the lift. And it started with this. And then like this. And then a one and a half. And then like this. And then a one and a half. So I already just made the left hand. It's really not that difficult when you have the right shortcuts. Uh, so four and then like this. And then two before. Like this. So now we copy the pattern for all the chords. Something was wrong. I can just like do like this. Oh, we added an extra rhythm. And it's just like choosing some specific words, sounds, instruments, or it all makes up character. So if you made a song with this and I heard the rhythm with this, I would be like, ah, this is your song. Because working with your rhythms is just so extremely important. One thing we could do is to extend the last chord to make it less abrupt. I think that's the word. And it's a bit more messy now. So it's all about if you like it or not. Let's make a last one. So let's let's start with a, a left hand. So R L L R L R R L. I'm really just randoming. So it starts with R L. And I'm really just trying different stuff out. I really like that. Yes, that was my favorite. Always try out different options because you can't really imagine that much. So it's really when you get to try a lot of different options that you really get to know what you like. Just because you like the first pick doesn't mean that there isn't anything that you like even better. And compared with this taking maybe five seconds to try out two different options, then do it. R, L, L. So right, left, left, and then right. I really like that. I didn't like that. I like that. Uh, R L L R L. I think it was interesting. So two R's and then one L. the last L for our left. I like this the most, I think. I will give it a listen. Yes. So again, I will uh, start with making the bass. So four and then like this. And I wish it didn't move back. But, but. Like this. So this should be right. And of course, I could also just copy paste one of the other ones to have like a guideline. So we can do this for the right hand. So I will copy paste it here. 
So I really like have a template kind of ish. So I know that this that was really, really easy actually. There's no reason to like make it harder for yourself than it needs to be. So like this and then I can delete this again. I wouldn't say that this is my favorite rhythm, but it has some character. And that's just so important because if there is no character, then there is no music. And maybe when I did this, I will get inspired to like do something else. For example, I would actually like to like do this, I think. just made it a bit more like it added some flow to the rhythms I think okay so the next concept is to have kind of arpeggios in my right and then a rhythm in the left so let's try I will just be boring and like make the most plain rhythm in the bass So maybe like this. Control D is also a very, very good shortcut. It adds a new note afterwards, the one that you just added. I will just try to finish this and we will listen. So Control C, Control V, Control V. Control V. And it's set like this rhythm. And I made a mistake before, but that's no problem. Like this. And like this. So like this. Like, it's not because something is better than others, but it's just nice to have different modes, different ways of playing your chords. Now we have been playing around with 15135. Five. We could also try to use 1573 or 1537. So let's try to do it. So 1513. One, so we don't need the f extra 5, so we will delete those. And then we will change the 1 in the right hand to either a major or a minor 7th or maybe even a 6th. So let's try. So this is a major 7th. Minus seventh or a sixth. I think I will stick with the sixth. So I changed it to a minus seventh. I really like the sound of that. And then to a minus to a major seventh. And then to a minor seventh. You can watch my chords video if you want to get more knowledge about chords. So we added a seventh. So we have like one, five, seven, or six, and then three on top. One, five, six, three. One, five, seven, three. Let's try to make a pattern in the left hand. So for example, it could be like... Bum, 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 ba, dum. So simply by playing the right hand 
totally plain and then having a rhythm in the bass in the left hand just brings so much character. Let's try to simply just copy paste this. I will drag it around while pressing control to copy it. Like this. And I can do this because they all have perfect fifths so the interval will always be the same. And it's just, it sounds totally different. We can also try to do the same with the more plain notes, simply adding the same rhythm in this bass, just to see how that sounds. Control and then just moving it and that will double it. And also here it just works. It's so this is also just another way to bring rhythms to your chords, bring personality, bring character to your chords. Rhythm and basically every time you try to do something, every time you do something, it adds personality, character. And Character is the most important thing when you make music. We can also add notes. So if we make a rhythm in the bass. So we added the fourth to bring some more to bring some more tension somehow, to give it some more character basically, give it some more color. Let's try this out. So I added the fourth in the left hand and the root in the right hand. And I have like two different rhythms. And I just got a bit surprised about how good it sounds. So let's try to copy paste it. So like this. And I think I will make some changes. When I listen to this, I'm like, it's okay, but it, it's like, it sounds a bit like a repetition, which it of course is, but we can experiment with making longer patterns. So I'm trying to figure out what it is that I don't really like. Maybe I should have these as a sixth instead. Yeah, I, I really like that. Because in the second chord we are not using the sixth, we are using the minor sevens instead. instance the fourth didn't sound very nice but what if it we make it an augmented fourth maybe like this instead Just hit this note, 
It just sounded like a million. Accidents are the best thing in the whole universe. Kind of. So this example is more to show you that don't be afraid to just mess around. And it doesn't need to be a pattern that is repeated like very precisely. It doesn't even need to be repeated. It can also be a very long sequence. It can be an eight bar long sequence. In my experience, these techniques work best when you have four notes. And right now we have five, but four of them are duplicates. So let's try to change some of the notes. So the third is important. And just mess around with the chords. I know this hasn't much to do with rhythms. But it's like, why not try it out? The third. It can become so beautiful. And then add some rhythm to it. It doesn't need to be one five one three five. It can be one five seven three six or it can be one five six nine three. It can be kind of everything. So while playing with your chords, try to play with your voicings and which notes you include. Try to make your own left and right rhythms. Sit down and do it while you're just trying to make the best of it and then afterwards try to make some random ones. You can make five or ten different ones and just really get to explore what it can be. Because there are so many options and when we are doing it by trying to make it sound good then we are like limited to some habits that we have. So by simply just by random writing L R L L R R L L without even getting to think about what you're writing, then you expose yourself for the risk of doing something new that you really like much more than everything else. Try to make rhythms in the left hand and arpeggios in the right hand. Try to make arpeggios in the left and normal chords in your right. And then simply try to make arpeggios both in left and right hands using all the different kinds of notes that you will like to add. Simply just just listen to what you're doing and if it sounds good, it is good. And as the last thing, experiment with making longer patterns because often we can get tired of short patterns. Longer patterns doesn't have to be new all the way, but it can be like small changes that will keep the listener listening focused. I hope that this inspired you to do some incredible rhythms for your chords. And if you like this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and consider to subscribe to my channel. It would truly make me happy. Enjoy!